Welcome to Rapid Movie Recap, your one-stop shop for recapping cinematic tales faster than you can say spoiler alert. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button like it owes you money, then gently caress the like button with your cursor for good measure. And if you want to stay in the loop with our speedrun recaps, don't forget to summon the notification fairy by ringing the bell icon. Now before you ask, yes, subtitles are available. Simply click the magical CC button and presto. No more guessing what the mumbling protagonist is saying. Who knew that movies could be both a visual and literary experience at the same time? But wait, there's more. You can be the superhero of our story by swooping down to our merchandise links below. Yes, that's right, folks, your opportunity to trade hard-earned cash for things you probably don't need but desperately want. Now doesn't that sound like a perfect way to show your support for our humble little corner of the internet? The movie begins in complete darkness. Someone's voice can be heard saying, I died when I was 28 years old. The next scene shows a young man named George Foreman traveling in the back of a truck with his sisters, Mary and Gloria, and his brother, Roy. Their mom, Nancy, is seated up front. They arrive at a house that looks like it's seen better days. Later, at dinner time, Nancy divides a small hamburger into four parts for the kids. George is about to start eating when Mary signals him to wait. Nancy leaves them in saying grace, but she doesn't eat any food herself. Once George has finished his share, he jokingly says he's still so hungry he could eat the table. At this, Mary gives him some for hamburger. The following day at school, George's clothes and shoes are worn out with holes in them. His sock can even be seen through his shoe. He's eager to answer when the teacher asks a question, raising his hand immediately. But the teacher overlooks him, perhaps due to his shabby appearance, and chooses another student who is dressed nicely with neat hair. At lunchtime, George sits with his classmates but has no food. He can only watch as they enjoy their sandwiches and chicken. A classmate makes fun of him for being poor, throwing a chicken skin near the garbage and renaming George as Poor Man instead of Foreman. This gets laughs from the class. Anger George rushes over and punches the mocking student to the floor, challenging him to insult him again. But when a teacher appears, George flees. The scene then shifts to an older George wandering around a rough area in Houston. A friend hands him a flask, which he takes. Spotting a seemingly drunk man leaving a bar, they decide to follow him. They tackle the man to the ground to rob him, but find no wallet, just a police badge. The drunk man is actually a cop. Hearing sirens, they both run each in different directions. A police car follows George, who hides under a house. To avoid detection by a police dog, George smears himself with muddy wastewater dripping from the house pipes. His quick thinking saves him. As George walks home, he sees an ad for the job corps. He discusses it with his mom at the diner where she works. She's not too pleased, but agrees to support him if he promises not to fight. George is sent to California for job corps training. He excels there and befriends a smart guy named Desmond who sneaks in a flask. His mom sends him a surprise, brand new Converse sneakers. But after a training day, George discovers his new shoes have been stolen. At lunch, he spots a guy wearing shoes identical to his. The thief makes a run for it, with George giving chase across the campus. George manages to corner the thief in a dorm room, threatening to throw him out of the window. But Doc Broaddus, another staff member, intervenes. George gets his shoes back while the thief escapes. Doc now faces a decision, send George to jail, send him back home, or let him stay. Desperate, George begs Doc not to send him away. Doc seems to be considering taking him to the train station. Instead of taking George to a train station or jail, Doc drives him to a boxing gym. He hands George boxing gear, including headgear and gloves. George squares off with another boxer who is quite agile and moves quickly around the ring. Tired, George gets knocked down by a single punch, prompting laughter from onlookers. This makes George angry. Stepping out of the ring, he delivers a punch so powerful that it dislodges a punching bag from the ceiling. Witnessing this, Doc sees George's potential and starts training him. He teaches George to be mindful of his steps, to think strategically, and to utilize his strengths. He even introduces him to a trainer and promotions guy he knows. When George calls his mom, she's upset to hear that he started fighting again. George insists that it's not just fighting, it's a sport with rules. He wins a few boxing matches and Doc mentions that while it's too late for him to compete in the upcoming Olympics, he should be ready for the one in five years. George is disappointed to hear this. Unexpectedly, a year later, George finds himself at the Olympics. He squares off with a Russian boxer, Jomis Sepolis, and wins the gold medal. The crowd is ecstatic, cheering, Foreman, Foreman. George feels on top of the world as he waves a small American flag that's handed to him. Back in Houston, George proudly wears his gold medal. However, a friend criticizes him, saying George allowed himself to be a tool for a country that doesn't value its black citizens. This critique motivates George, and he goes on a winning streak in his fights. 
At a train station, George meets Paula. They start dating, fall in love, and eventually get married. George earns a spot in a championship fight against the formidable Joe Frazier. Pundits fear George might end up severely injured. His friend Desmond is among the spectators. However, George defies expectations and knocks out Frazier, becoming the new heavyweight champion of the world. At a victory party, George offers Desmond a job managing his finances on the condition that he stops drinking. Desmond immediately agrees. That night, George finds a beautiful woman in his room, and they spend the night together. On TV, Muhammad Ali insults George and challenges him to a fight. During a birthday party for his daughter at his mansion, George acts aloof towards his wife Paula and tries to take over cooking. He claims credit for the food despite his mother insisting that they thank God. His sister Mary announces her pregnancy, and Desmond discusses investing George's money in reliable stocks. Paula receives a silent phone call and she confronts George privately, suspecting him of infidelity and demanding honesty. George, however, prefers to concentrate on his forthcoming match with Ali. In a hotel lobby, Ali brags to a crowd of sports journalists about the upcoming fight. George hears this and confronts Ali, but ultimately walks away. One spectator suggests that George could seriously hurt Ali. During the fight, Ali adopts a defensive strategy, leaning against the ropes and allowing George to tire himself out by continuously punching. Ali talks non-stop throughout the match and finally an exhausted George is knocked out by Ali, who wins the fight. George has a phone conversation with his daughter and Paula urges him to sign the divorce papers. His mother, Nancy, tries to comfort him, puzzled why he fired his trainer and promotions guy. George expresses his frustration about Ali's strategy in the ring. To regain some respect, George sets up a boxing exhibition where he aims to knock out five fighters in one day. Ali, serving as a sports commentator, taunts George from the sidelines. They exchange heated words. In the locker room afterwards, George decides he needs to go back to his roots and be a true fighter instead of just a performer. At the hospital, there's a crisis. Mary and her baby are in a critical condition. Nancy wants to pray for them, but George doesn't join in. Instead, he goes outside and makes his own prayer offering his life to God if Mary and the baby can live. By morning, Mary and the baby have miraculously improved and are doing well. The baby is named George. George's next boxing match is against Jimmy Young. George lands some heavy blows on Young but fails to finish him off. In the 12th round, George is knocked down and ultimately loses the fight in a unanimous decision. In the locker room, George begins hearing voices and loses consciousness, falling and hitting his head. In this state, he pleads with God to let him live. When he wakes up, he finds everyone crowded around him in concern. Despite their worries, he stands up and yells, Hallelujah, while spraying shower water on himself. George then gives his sermon in a church, talking about his passion for fighting, but declaring that he's now dedicating his life to God. He notices a young woman, Mary, in the congregation. Doc attempts to convince him to return to the boxing ring, but George insists he's finished with fighting. He visits Ali at his mansion, not to challenge him to a rematch as Ali expects, but to ask for his forgiveness. Though Ali teases George at first, they part as friends, each with newfound respect for the other. George seeks forgiveness from Paula, promising to be there for their children. He starts preaching in public, on a street corner. Some passers-by heckle him, urging him to return to boxing, but George stands firm, declaring he'd rather die than fight again. He takes Mary to lunch, impressing her with his changed ways. He shows her a dilapidated church that he plans to renovate, signaling the beginning of his life as an ordained minister. Seven years later, a grandmother comes to George, asking him to teach her troubled grandson how to box. However, George insists that boxing isn't the solution. Later, he sees on the TV that the boy has been arrested for burglary. This incident makes George realize that if he had interacted with the boy on his terms, instead of trying to impose his own views, he might have been able to help him. George meets with Desmond at a dilapidated gym on a street corner. George plans to transform it into a youth center to give the local kids a positive place to spend their time. Desmond says he'll arrange the funds for this project, but after George leaves, Desmond takes a drink from a flask he's been carrying. The youth center is successful and popular with the local kids, and George feels he's making a positive impact. However, they run into a problem when the power goes out due to unpaid bills. George and Mary visit the bank only to find out that Desmond has made bad financial decisions, leaving George broke. Nancy, George's mother, visits him at the church and informs him that everyone is looking for Desmond, who has disappeared. She urges George not to become bitter over this situation. George finds Desmond in a bar who admits that he has lost all the money. To raise funds, George starts a commercial for Barbie sauce and sells everything he owns. Despite his efforts to continue preaching, he is unable to make ends meet. Left with no other option, George decides to return to boxing. 
Mary is hesitant about this decision, but she later shares a vision she had, in which she saw George as the heavyweight champion. George then goes to Doc, who is training a new boxer, and asks him to train him again. Doc initially teases George for gaining weight, but he promises to train him if George can slim down to 265 pounds. George commits to the challenge, works hard, and achieves the goal. With his weight down, Doc agrees to train him, saying that with some new techniques, George might stand a chance. Even though many people thought George's return to boxing was a bad idea, he proved them wrong by winning his first fight against Steve Zosky. As George wins more fights, the crowd starts to cheer for him, and the commentators begin to support him. While making a comeback in boxing, George also becomes a public figure and promotes various products using his name and image. He presents himself as friendly and approachable, a change from his previously grumpy and disrespectful persona. Even his boxing style changes, becoming more relaxed and efficient. This helps him overcome the stamina issues he had before due to nervous tension. An employee at the bank tells George and his wife, Mary, that their financial troubles are over. The George Foreman Grill, one of the products George promoted, is going to generate enough income for them for generations. But even though George doesn't need to fight anymore for money, he isn't satisfied. He believes in Mary's vision and feels he needs to fulfill it. Dedicated to his goal, George spends a lot of time training in the ring. At the age of 45, he gets a chance to challenge Michael Moore for the World Championship. Despite being 19 years younger than George, Moore proves to be a tough opponent. George, considered an underdog, wears the same trunks he wore in his fight against Ali. In the match, George uses smart tactics just like Doc had taught him years ago. He capitalizes on his strengths and exploits Moore's weaknesses. George acknowledges that he had to hit rock bottom to realize his potential, that even the impossible can be achieved. In the end, George wins the match with a knockout and kneels down to thank God for his victory. After his successful comeback, George retires from boxing and goes back to being a preacher. Thanks to the $187 million he received from selling his rights to the George Foreman Grill, his youth center is now financially secure forever. George has many sons, and he decides to name all of them George Foreman. His reasoning is that if one of them faces hardship, they all share it. And if one of them succeeds, they all share the success. George and Allie, once rivals, maintain a lifelong friendship, speaking to each other every day for the rest of their lives. Sure thing, hold on to your keyboard because you're in for a ride. You've just been graced with the cinema summary equivalent of a double espresso shot. But listen, those clever folks who turn caffeine and imagination into film magic, they need your support. So before you dash off to spread the word about our incredibly efficient movie recaps, do us a favor. Visit the link in the description below and watch the full movie. It's like tasting the full-bodied espresso instead of just a sip. And while you're basking in the glow of cinematic glory, don't forget to show us some love too. Yes, yes, we know you're busy, but it only takes a second to like and subscribe. Let's make it a win-win, shall we? You get your regular dose of movie in a minute madness, and we get to keep serving up the filmic fast food you love. So go ahead and hit those buttons harder than George Foreman in the ring. Here's to more rapid movie recaps. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more speedy cinematic adventures.